Have you ever heard of the DMZ? The DMZ is a line that you can probably never cross, a line that severs the Korean Peninsula into two separate countries. It is, in other words, the demilitarized zone. Now, what is the DMZ? To answer this question, we need to dive into the history of the DMZ, which carries us back to the World War II, after which the Korean Peninsula was divided into the North and South along the 38th parallel. In North Korea, there was the Soviet Union occupying power, and in South Korea, there was the United States troops engaging in a Cold War with the USSR. When the foreign forces left the peninsula, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea was created in the north and the Republic of Korea in the south in 1948. Two years later, on June 25, 1950, the Korean War commenced, following the sudden invasion of North Korea across the 38th parallel on South Korean territory. In 1953, international intervention pushed North Korea back to its starting point, the 38th parallel, and on July 27, 1953, the DMZ was created after signing the Armistice Agreement. Following this truce, each side moved their troops back 2,000 meters from the front line, which resulted in a buffer zone of 4 kilometers wide. This zone is called the DMZ. In the center of the DMZ, one can see the military demarcation line, MDL, which indicates where the front was when the agreement was signed. The demilitarized zone currently runs for about 150 miles across the peninsula from the mouth of the Han River to the south of the North Korea's Kosong town. Currently, DMZ is a popular tourist site for Koreans in both the north and the south. According to the UN command, more than 105,000 tourists visited the JSA from the south in 2017, while nearly 30,000 visited from the north. Within the DMZ, there is a truce village, which is located about 5 miles east of Kaesong, North Korea. This was where the peace discussions between the two sides took place during the Korean War, and ever since, it has been used for numerous conferences regarding the disputes on the Korean Peninsula. The DMZ, as a New York Times article states, may be the scariest place on Earth. However, there is indeed life in the DMZ. This photo shows the Taesong village, the only place inhabited by South Korean citizens in the DMZ. The only way for a non-native to enter this village is by marrying an inhabitant. Any attempt to defect across the border could trigger a hail of gunfire, so villagers must be alarmed at all times. At first glance, this village looks quite ordinary. Rice fields, tractors, and homes. There is even a church, an elementary school, and even a movie theater. The village is occupied by minefields and sealed off with barbed wire fences, tank traps, and legions of battle-ready troops on both sides. However, the people living in the DMZ have lives that are far from ordinary. The villagers are expected to sacrifice much of the freedom and individual rights that other South Koreans take for granted. There is a midnight to sunrise curfew and a door-to-door -door roll call every night with no gym, no hospital, no supermarket, and no restaurant. However, life is currently developing in the Taesong Freedom Village. Recently, South Korea's main mobile phone carrier, KT Corp, has installed a 5G, an ultra-fast communications network, one of the first such systems installed for any South Korean town. Before 5G arrived, rice farmers had to ask for a military escort to go to a reservoir a mile away to use a water pump. Signing of the Armistice Agreement in 1953, there have been numerous incidents that took place near the DMZ, including border disputes on land, air, and the sea. Between 1954 and 1992, a total of 3,693 armed North Korean agents infiltrated into South Korea. And by January 2011, North Korea had violated the Armistice Agreement 221 times. There have been intrusions from the south to the north as well. In 1967, for instance, the South Korean forces had carried out raids on 50 North Korean facilities. However, the DMZ is slowly developing from a zone historically associated with ceaseless conflicts to a zone of peace and cooperation in the Korean Peninsula. In 2018, Kim Jong-un and Moon Jae-in met in the DMZ, which was the first official peaceful meeting of North and South Korea that has ever happened. In this historic summit, most of the discussion was focused on the willingness of Kim Jong-un to give up North Korea's nuclear weapons. 
Because of this key event in the GMZ, many more meetings were scheduled and conducted in a more civilized manner, and the relationship between North and South Korea has loosened a little, unlike what it was like in the past. Because the DMZ has been intact from human activity and intervention for 70 years, it has now developed into an important environmental sanctuary that contains various vegetation, wetlands, habitats, and species. In fact, this accounts for 30% of all animals and plants that are inhabiting on the Korean Peninsula and includes 82 endangered species like cranes, spoonbills, otters, and goats. In 2006, it was designated as the Hong Kong Estuary Wetland Protected Area, and since then, the international community has been recognizing its ecological importance in protecting migratory birds. In an era in which reunification is a major agenda in peace conferences, it is safe to say that the DMZ not only is an important part of Korean history, but also will continue to be an important part of Korea's future. Whatever fate is waiting ahead for the Korean Peninsula, DMZ will be there to witness it first.